Hello everyone. In this episode, we're going to analyze Ghazal number 64. General theme is uh, Rumi's yearning for the divine. توی دریا منم ماهی چنان دارم که می خواهی بکن رحمت بکن شاهی که از تو ماندم تنها You are the sea, you are the ocean, I am the fish, have me as you wish زهی انقای ربانی شهنشه شمس تبریزی که او شمسی است نی شرقی و نی غربی و نی از جا Acclaimed the divine سیمرغ شمس تبریزی He refers to شمس تبریزی as, as the divine Simorg is referring to Shams as this perfect man who has traversed his spiritual stages, reaching perfection. General theme is uh, Rumi's yearning for the divine, the lover's yearning for the beloved. He's going to say that he is in need of his divine beloved and that he needs the divine beloved to send him a grace making this union happen. Otherwise, he is trapped in the material world alone under a burning fire suffering from this distance because of the separation from the Divine Beloved. Let us read the poem and analyze it together. You didn't see any love that was from this sea. You didn't see any love that was from this sea. You didn't see any love that was from this sea. You didn't see any love that was from this sea. In the first line, Rumi is asking, have you seen any lover who says, the experience that I have had with, with, the, with my beloved is enough, I want no more. Indicating that if the lover is really in love, they would never ever be content with, with their experience. They always want more. In the second hemistage, he asks, have you seen any fish who says that it is content with the amount of water that it has experienced. He wants no more. Again, questioning that a real lover is in need of the beloved, like the fish is in need of the water, endlessly, infinitely. Have you seen any design running away from the designer? Have you seen any lover who wants separation from the beloved. The design and the designer are inseparable. They have become one. Underscoring this relationship and the lover's need for the beloved, uh, Rumi is expressing his need to the divine beloved, saying that I cannot be separated from the divine beloved. This separation is burning me. And we are going to see this in the following lines. I wouldn't let go of the beloved. And if I did, he wouldn't let go of me. In another line from a different ghazal in Divan, Rumi says, Zanjir bar dastam zanat gerdast bar kari baram. Dar khum be mei qargam konat ger qast hushari konam. That's, if I want to do something, if I want to go after an errand, the beloved would handcuff me. If he wants to get sober, if he wants to get awake, the divine beloved is going to give him wine. So much so that he, he will not be able to operate on his own will. He says, it gets me so intoxicated that I lose myself. I'm selfless. I have no will of my own anymore. Even if I want to get away, the beloved is pulling me. The beloved is haunting me. Kesha kesha star janam. Keshande kist mi danam. Dami khaham biya saayam. Mali kan nistam kanam. Be har rozam junoon aarad. Degar baazi burun aarad. Ke man baazi chay uyam. Ze baazi hai uheiran. Somebody is pulling my heart. I know who that somebody is. I want to rest. I want to sleep a little bit, but I am not able to do so. You see, even if he wants to do something, sometimes the Divine Beloved doesn't allow him. There is this mutual relationship here between the Divine Beloved and the lover. Every day he plays a, a new trick, making me mad, making me lose my mind. I'm nothing but a doll in my beloved's hand, bewildered by the tricks he's playing on me. These were two different poems from two different uh, uh, parts of uh, the Divan. And let us get back here. Again, Rumi is emphasizing that, uh, that, that point, saying that I would not want to be separated from my divine beloved. I would not want that. And even if I did, that I wouldn't. I have gotten to a level that he would not let me go. Uvat aashiq firaq andar chu ismi khali az maani wali maani chu maashuqi firaqat darad az asma. If the lover is separated from the beloved, he or she would be nothing but a name devoid of any meaning. But meaning, the reality, is in not need of that name. The lover is in total need 
is in total submission. The beloved is needless. Toi dar ya manam mahi, chenan daram ke mi khahi, be kun rahmat, be kun shahi, ke az to mandam tanha. You are the sea, you are the ocean, I am the fish. Have me as you wish. Indicating Rumi's total submission to the Divine Beloved. He's submitting himself to God, saying that I have no will of my own. Everything you say, I will be obeying. Have me as you want. He's so occupied by this love that he's enjoying every bits and pieces of it. He's then begging God for, for, for his grace, saying that I am fed up with this separation. I can't take no more. I am fed up with this separation. دمی که تو نی حاضر گرفت آتش چنین بالا Why are you refraining to send me your grace? All this fire that I'm feeling within me The fire, the fire of separation that I feel within me Is because of the separation And it can end if, if you showed yourself If you ended the separation In Rumi's mysticism, humans were uh, in union with God They were experiencing the Divine Beloved uninterruptedly and continuously. But upon creation, they were separated. They were made to forget that they were once united. They come to this world to be tested. They develop intellectual skills. They uh, practice uh, religious principles, ethical principles. They sharpen their mind, serve God, and they serve humanity. But this is temporary. Whatever the act, whatever the theater, is designed for, for the human beings. Those who have experienced this unveiling, remembering the, the absolute presence of God, they are bothered by this theater. They say, Rumi is one of those people. He says, look, I don't want to be part of this play anymore. I want you. اگر آتش تو را بیند چنان در گوشه بنشیند که از آتش هر که گل چیند دهد آتش گل رعنا I'm burning by this separation I'm burning by your love but if you show yourself by your presence the same fire will be tamed losing its essence it will not burn me anymore instead of flames it will have red roses از آب است این جهان بی تو مبادا یک زمان بی تو به جان تو که جان بی تو شکنجست و بلا بر ما without you this world is a pure torture for me. I want no part of it. I don't want to be part of this play. Save me the triviality. I want you. I don't want the charms and the beauties of this world. What I want is but you. خیالت همچو سلطانی شدن در دل خرامانی چنان کایت سلیمانی درون مسجد اقسام بزارا مشعله بر شد. همه مسجد منور شد. بهشت و حوز کوسر شد پر از رزوان پر از هورا Your thought passes through my heart like a lord with its majestic beauty like Solomon Soleiman in Arabic like Solomon did in, in Al-Aqsa Mosque The next line he's saying by your thought passing through that with your majestic beauty all the lights are brightened the whole mosque is enlightened the whole place has become like the heaven full of angels, full of beautiful angels. Rumi is indicating the beauty of divine manifestations. These manifestations are enlightening, majestic, and informing. Zahi del shad morghi ku maqami yaft an dar ishq be ku ha qaf ke yabat maqam u jay juz an qaf Acclaim is the bird who has find a high place in the divine in the divine love who can reach the divine but the simorg. Simorg is this a uh, mythological bird in Persian mystical poetry, which has spiritual and uh, divine significance, sometimes being interpreted as uh, the perfect man, al-insan al-kamil, the perfected spiritual seeker, the seeker that has gotten through practices and disciplines, g- getting to a high, high level. I'm not going to get into the technical discussion of the perfect man. It's a terminology coming from Ibn Arabi's metaphysics. The perfect man being this reality, this being that has uncovered all the veils, the veils of darkness, the veils of light between uh, the beloved and their humanity, actualizing their whole potential. So saying that it's only the simurq, this, this bird, this perfect man or woman who can reach the divine realm. Reaching the divine realm has one key. And what is that key? That is, that is the divine love. Acclaim the bird who has gotten a high station within divine love. And that is only how that bird is going to ascend to that realm. Zehi angay rabbani shahan shah shams tabrizi ke u shamsi ist ni sharqi ni gharbi ni azja Acclaimed the divine simur. Shams Tabrizi. He refers to Shams Tabrizi as 
as the divine Simorg. He's referring to Shams as this perfect man who has traversed his spiritual stages, reaching perfection. Shams Tabrizi, well, considering the name, Shams literally means son. Shams Tabrizi means son of Tabriz, the sun, the planet sun. So he's playing with this word. Shams is the sun that is neither from the west nor from the east. He's from the placeless. His perfection is inalable that he has access to divine realities, to the truth, he experiences them. Zehi Angol Yarabbani acclaimed the divine bird, Shahan Shah Shams Tabrizi, the Lord Shams Tabrizi, Ke'u Shamsi Sni Sharqi Yuni Garbi, he is the sun, neither from the west nor from the east nor from any place. He comes from the placeless. So to summarize this whole ghazal, uh, Rumi is yearning for a divine. He is fed up with this separation between him um, and the Divine Beloved. He's begging the Divine for his grace, asking him to end this separation. And how does he do that? To get the glimpses of the Divine, to experience him while he's still in this world, in the material world, as he said, as he's stuck here. He's gonna do that through Divine Love, which underscores the centrality of love in Rumi's perspective, in his mysticism. Some people, including myself, call his mysticism the metaphysics of love. And uh, this Ghazal uh, is supporting that designation. And then he's uh, showing respect to his master, Shams Tabrizi, saying that you are beyond this world. You have access to spiritual truth, spiritual realities, guiding me, guiding others, enlightening people around you. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And looking forward to having you in our next episode.